Imagine a vehicle that moves without propellers, turbines, or any moving parts. No vibration, no noise, just silent motion through water or air, driven only by magnetic forces. That's not science fiction anymore. It's the idea behind the magneto-hydrodynamic thruster, or MHD drive. First imagined in Cold War fiction like The Hunt for Red October, this technology once seemed impossible due to its extreme power needs. But today, with new materials, superconductors, and nuclear energy systems, the concept is once again catching attention. The question is simple. Can magnetism alone move the ships and spacecraft of tomorrow? The Dream of Silent Propulsion the story of the MHD thruster starts with a bold dream, creating propulsion with no moving parts. Instead of spinning propellers, it uses electric and magnetic fields to push a conductive fluid, like seawater or liquid metal, through a channel. The result is thrust, generated quietly and smoothly. The principle sounds perfect for submarines, where stealth and silence mean survival. This dream reached popular culture through the hunt for Red October, which imagined a Soviet submarine gliding silently using such a drive. That fiction was inspired by real scientific experiments already underway in Japan and the United States. In 1992, Japan's Yamato-1 became the first real ship powered by a seawater MHD thruster. It worked, at least in principle. The vessel could move forward using only electromagnetic forces, no propellers required. It was completely silent underwater. But there was a catch. The system needed enormous power and cryogenic cooling, and it could only reach about 8 knots, far slower than modern submarines. The Yamato-1's diesel generators also produced noise, defeating the goal of perfect stealth. Still, Yamato-1 proved that the concept worked, and it left scientists asking how to make the idea practical. How an MHD drive works to understand this technology, we need to look put at the Lorentz force, the basic physical principle behind the drive. When an electric current passes through a conductive fluid inside a magnetic field, it creates a sideways force. This force pushes the fluid in one direction and the vehicle in the opposite direction. Imagine two electrodes inside a channel, one positive, anode, and one negative, cathode. As current flows between them, the magnetic field, arranged at a right angle, creates a push on the fluid. This interaction is what propels the vehicle. The math behind this can be described using the right-hand rule, a simple trick to find the direction of force based on current and magnetic field. Engineers adjust the geometry, current density, and magnetic flux to control how strong that force is. In lab tests, scientists have used liquid metals like gallium, indium, and tin to demonstrate MHD pumping. These alloys are extremely conductive, have low viscosity, and can flow smoothly. Because of this, they can efficiently convert kinetic energy to electrical energy and vice versa. Such systems could someday allow nuclear reactors to directly turn heat into electricity. No turbines, no moving parts. That's more efficient than today's steam cycles. But building these systems is tough. The materials, cooling, and magnetic fields all require delicate control. The challenge of seawater propulsion. When the working fluid is liquid metal, everything runs smoothly. But replace that with seawater, and the situation changes dramatically. Seawater is only mildly conductive compared to liquid metals, so it takes much higher currents and stronger magnetic fields to achieve useful thrust. That's why the Yamato-1 needed massive power tens of thousands of amps, and still moved only 8 knots. To move faster, an MHD thruster would have to generate much stronger magnetic fields, which was nearly impossible with 1990s technology. But things are changing. Today, high-temperature superconducting HTS magnets, can produce over 20 tesla in compact setups. These materials, made from special ceramics, can carry 150 times more current than copper and have almost zero electrical resistance. That means more power and efficiency with less heat. However, superconductors need to be cooled to cryogenic temperatures around 196 degrees Celsius using liquid nitrogen or helium. That adds complexity, cost, and maintenance challenges. 
And even if the magnets survive, another problem remains. Electrode corrosion. When electricity flows through seawater, it splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen gas bubbles. These bubbles cling to electrodes, lower efficiency, and corrode the metal. Over time, the system loses thrust. Modern researchers now use computational fluid dynamics, CFD, powerful computer simulations to optimize flow channels and minimize these losses. If corrosion-resistant electrodes and efficient superconductors can be combined, the MHD drive could finally become practical. Powering the impossible. Even with perfect magnets and corrosion-proof electrodes, one obstacle remains the enormous energy demand. An MHD thruster can only perform well if it receives a massive, steady power source. That's where nuclear reactors come in. Modern submarines already use pressurized water reactors, PWRs, capable of producing tens of megawatts. For example, the Ohio-class US Navy submarines use an S8G reactor generating around 45 megawatts of power. That amount of energy could, in theory, feed a high-temperature superconducting MHD drive. If efficiency reaches 30%, such a system might propel a large submarine at 20 knots, still below modern speeds, but completely silent and vibration-free. And the research isn't purely theoretical. Under the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, HRL Laboratories has developed an MHD pump that survives seawater corrosion using new electrode coatings. This means the key weakness, electrode decay, may finally have a solution. In parallel, the US Navy has already tested a 36 megawatt HTS superconducting propulsion motor designed for next generation DDG-1000 destroyers. This motor is half the size and weight of a traditional copper motor, proving that the Navy has the knowledge and experience to handle cryogenic propulsion systems. Put these pieces together, and it's clear the components for a functional nuclear-powered MHD submarine already exist. The only missing step is integration. DARPA's secret experiments and the unknown future. DARPA rarely announces prototypes until they're proven. But with its electrode development programs, some experts believe small-scale MHD propulsion tests may already be happening under classified projects. The logic is clear. Only a nuclear-powered vessel can supply enough sustained energy for MHD propulsion. Diesel or battery systems simply can't compete. If a working nuclear MHD submarine exists or is being tested, it would be the quietest vehicle ever built. It would produce no cavitation noise, no propeller wash, and leave almost no wake. Detection would only be possible through its magnetic field signature. Still, even with all the latest advancements, MHD drives aren't ready to break speed records. For now, they're limited by efficiency. A 45 megawatt reactor might push a sub at 20 knots, but a modern propeller can easily do that with half the power. The race then isn't about speed. It's about stealth and endurance. And while secrecy surrounds naval use, civilian research is moving ahead more openly. NASA, for example, is exploring MHD principles in plasma control systems for hypersonic aircraft and atmospheric re-entry vehicles. MHD in the sky and beyond. NASA's interest in MHD propulsion focuses on controlling ionized air, or plasma, at hypersonic speeds. By steering plasma with electromagnetic fields, engineers can reduce drag, control airflow, and even generate power from the vehicle's own motion. Imagine a spacecraft that uses its magnetic field to shape shock waves, keeping its surface cooler during re-entry, or a hypersonic jet that flies faster than Mach 10 by actively managing air around it instead of relying on static wings. MHD systems could also work in space. Engines like the Vasima, variable, specific impulse magnetoplasma rocket, already use MHD principles to accelerate plasma for propulsion. With enough power, perhaps from a compact nuclear source, these drives could send spacecraft to Mars or beyond much faster than chemical rockets. Everywhere we look, the same principle applies magnetism and electricity working together to move conductive matter. Whether it's seawater, liquid metal, or plasma, the physics remains the same. What changes is how we apply it, and how much power we can supply. Conclusion 
the magnetohydrodynamic thruster, is one of those rare ideas that straddles the line between science and imagination. It takes something invisible, magnetic force, and turns it into movement. No pistons, no turbines, just fields shaping energy itself. While its journey began with small prototypes like Japan's Yamato-1, the concept has grown into a frontier linking oceanic stealth, nuclear energy, and space propulsion. The challenges are still monumental. Cryogenic cooling, corrosion, and massive power demands. Yet each new step in superconductors and fluid dynamics brings this silent drive closer to reality. From DARPA's secret naval experiments to NASA's plasma flow control for hypersonic crafts, the same principle beats at the heart of it all. Control energy, and you control motion. The MHD drive may not dominate our seas or skies yet, but it points to a coming age where magnetic fields become the engines of human exploration.